uh, things are busy, busy, busy. Go, go, go. Uh, I hope you're doing well and enjoying, uh, you know, it's a couple weeks into the football season. That's pretty neat. Always fun. Uh, I'm here. Uh, you're here. Uh, I, first of all, want to say and call out myself for being wrong about what was going to happen on SNL. Uh, yet another reminder that I don't know the future and the past is uh, not an indicator of future results. Uh, I said uh, two episodes ago that I thought uh, that Lauren Michaels was probably going to keep uh, that comedian on the show and then, <clears throat> but, uh, but cancel, but like, you know, maybe like just end his contract after a year and they decided to let the dude go. Uh, I was basing that off of prior assumptions uh, and don't know the internals of things. So it's always a good reminder uh, that uh, I cannot predict the future and always humbling and always fun actually to be humbled uh, by life because uh, it is uh, it's a good teacher, you know what I mean? It's just me. Uh, anyways, uh, welcome to another episode. Uh, I have thoughts about maybe what I missed in terms of uh, like facts that I didn't consider. Um, but at the same time, I don't think that necessarily also gives me a sense of what the future is going to hold. Um, so I can opine upon it uh, briefly, but not at length. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, I'm not even going to opine on it because I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. It was funny. Like a, a friend asked me, who's older, he's like, asked me, what do you think the future of broadcast television is? And it was after this thing with Sean Gillis. And I was like, honestly, I have no idea. I have a sense of these things could be important. Um, I don't know how much uh, TV is going to go away in that sense. But in any case, uh, it was just something where I was like, okay, I'm humbled on this. I'm be, I should be humbled. And, uh, and I was. And I said, cool. Okay. That's okay. Um, I, uh, I can deal with that. I can tolerate that. Uh, nothing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I was just dead wrong about it. Um, and uh, yeah, the future is unknowable, and uh, I got to uh, got to respect that. Always a good reminder. Okay, uh, what else is going on? Uh, I, I watched this documentary this week. You can find it online on YouTube. Actually, it's called Little Dieter Needs to Fly. I found out about it uh, from reading uh, Tim Ferriss's Tool of Titans. One of his uh, guests mentions. Uh, this documentary and it is awesome it was the basis for um, uh, it was the basis for the movie Rescue Dawn and the documentary is just awesome it's so good and it's just like oh my god this guy went through so much suffering you just put in Little Dieter uh, L Little and then Dieter spelled D-I-E-T-E-R uh, needs to fly and you can find it on YouTube and it's an hour and 17 minutes. Uh, watch it. It's so good. Uh, it's so powerful. Uh, very insight. I don't know. Just just great. Um, and man, it's like this guy went through so much suffering. Um, and his story is just really interesting. And he's just an interesting and peculiar sort of character himself. Um, so I can't recommend that enough. And it doesn't take that much of your time. And also, I found out if you go on YouTube, you can actually play videos at a higher speed. Then um, you can play them uh, at up to two times the speed. A lot of times I'll, I'll play, actually I watched most of the movie on one and a half speed. And you can also turn on subtitles on YouTube. If you click the gear button on a YouTube video, you can actually, it, it, and it's not subtitles that they put in. Like Google is looking at the, the voice like analyzing the audio and will create a uh, voice for it, which is just so freaking cool that like that's built in. Um, you just have to like click uh, the dots and you can actually have the, uh, the, the terms run on the side, actually the subtitles. So anyways, uh, you can listen to stuff and watch stuff quickly and, and put on subtitles. I've been doing that for a lot of things lately. It's pretty cool. Uh, I dig it, um, uh, and yeah, I don't know, that's, that's, that's what's, uh, going on, it's just, it, the, the guy goes through bugs and all this terrible stuff, and he just is so serene, he seems so 
calm. I don't know if it's life affirming. It's life accepting. Absolutely, it's life accepting. Bro is life accepting like a mug, and uh, and it's just cool. I just really really dig it. It was fun. Um, I uh, what else uh, is going on? Uh, I had people over on Saturday to play uh, emulator games. I found out that I could. Uh, I remember that I could play emulator games off of my laptop. So we played a bunch of Super Smash Brothers. We played the N64 Smash Brothers, but actually I found out that I can also emulate, like, games from, like, the Wii on my... Because I still have a Wii, so it's just a surprise to me that I'm like, how is it my computer is powerful enough to emulate games from the Wii? And I have to remember, like, the Wii came out in 2007, bro. Like, the Wii is old. Like, it's 12 years, and it just gives me a sense of, like, how old I am. I'm like, what? I have that video game system. I still play it. It's 12 years old. There have been two Nintendo systems since it came out. So it's just like, yeah, computers can easily play Wii. And I have a Mac. It's not even a souped-up Mac. It's just a Mac laptop, standard issue, nothing fancy, not really a ton of RAM or memory or anything like that. But it can play Wii games just, like, fairly smoothly, which is incredible. Uh, anyways, uh, so if you are in my life, you we will definitely be playing some emulator game soon and i realized like this is the ultimate we didn't really have that much to do as as friends uh like a year ago i got together with some friends in colorado when we went hiking we watched some movies in the evening but i realized like i could have just brought my old xbox controllers because i bought a dongle which was like expensive it was like 50 bucks um because it's so old but essentially you can buy like old xbox controllers which are like i think they still go for like the wired ones go for like 15 bucks a pop you buy a usb router uh, like one of those USB hubs and you bring your laptop and it's like we could have just been playing like old school video games and honestly who wants to play new school video games I'm too old for that stuff I don't understand how it works so uh, if you are in my life that will be coming very soon because I realize I don't need to bring a game system all I need to do is bring my laptop and some controllers and a USB hub and not even a USB hub if I use my wireless dongle um, and we can just play tons of really, really cool games. So I'm very, very happy. That was awesome. And I've been playing Super Smash like every night for like 30 minutes before bed. Uh, or I, I play it while I listen to like uh, BBC World Service. It's incredible. Uh, so life is magical. Technology is amazing. Uh, it's not a problem no matter what anybody says. Uh, genetically modify everything. Genetically modify my foot. Um, Last thing, uh, people are talking about impeachment. I'm interested in whether it'll happen. It really, what people, like, what it really turns on is going to be whether uh, the uh, GOP senators turn. Because to get an actual, like, you know, quote-unquote impeachment conviction, I don't know what the legal term is, in the Senate, is going to require people to break ranks with their party. And you sort of wonder, going into this election year, why they would do that. Um... Jeff Flake says, apparently, there was, I read a story that said that he, <clears throat> that there are 35 GOP senators who were willing to, uh, to let him, uh, who, who actually would be willing to impeach Trump secretly, um, but it's like, well, what the fuck does Jeff Flake know? I don't know. I mean, like, not, not to use profanity, but it's like, what does he know? I mean, you know, he's saying that, uh, that doesn't mean it'll happen. And who knows why he's saying that? You know, I, everyone's got their own agenda, goddamn. Uh, I will say that uh, one thing that I hadn't considered is that the impeachment, right? Like, it'll be interesting to see. And again, the future's unknowable. That's how I started it. But it's like, it's interesting to see how this will would affect either party. Um, because I could see, I could definitely see the Democrats losing on this. And then the question is, would they win on it electorally later? Um, that's unclear to me. Because it might be part of a longer strategy of like, even if we lose. But I think... You know, if I had to put money down, I'd put money on it not happening, on on an impeachment not occurring. Um, but that's, I mean, you know, I think I think if, and also the reality is if he Trump will never be impeached because I think if he's there, the GOP senators will cue to him, hey, it, they'll, they'll play the Oscar music, and he'll step down if that happens. But the point is, like, if they're not willing to play him off of the Oscar music, he, he'll, he'll know, hey, I, I don't have to go. Um, so, I don't know. Interesting stuff going on. Um, you know, it'll be like a Nixon-esque 
thing where he just sort of like steps down. Anyways, uh, that's enough for this week. I know that's like a sixth of what my old episodes used to be, but hey, times are changing. Everything's got to be instant. Bam, bam. Quick, quick, quick. Snap, snap, snap. Choppy, choppy. Uh, I'll uh, talk to you later. Merry Christmas and much love.